Hey guys, now this is the seventh and final part of these mounting and polishing tutorial. Now, I encourage you to watch this one all the way to the end because, oh, well first because cleaning your sample is the most important step actually, is, is the one that uh, will allow you to get great pictures if you do it right. And second, because at the end I kind of summarize the most important things that you have to keep in mind when mounting and polishing, which surprisingly are not uh, necessarily the steps that you're taking when mounting and polishing. As, as I've said from the beginning, you want to uh, think ahead and think of the big picture and what impact you can make. And um, I hope you enjoy. Okay. All right, so this, this is the Vibermed, this right here. Uh, this machine uh, vibrates for a long time and as your sample sits inside this bowl, it's, it gets polished. Um, the first thing you need to know is that this bowl is removable and you can wash it. You should wash it every time you use it. And uh, right now it's just a plastic bowl. You're about to put a pad on this, on this uh, uh, bowl. So it has two holes right here. Uh, two tiny little holes that actually are supposed to go in two tiny little protrusions right here. So I always put it to the center and I rotate it until I feel that it clicks and it fell into the into that place. So you grab these pads right here, and this is kind of a furry pad. Uh, make sure your hands are very clean when you do it. In a similar way, I, I put it on in a similar way that I did with the uh, silk pad, the nylon pad, where I do it like a, a shape like this, like a half moon, like a taco. Put it straight in the center, as close to the center as I can, and then let one side go and use that side as the reference so I can start I should have done the other side yet again. So let me do put it right in the center. Let one side go. That was back on. So it takes takes a couple tries. But you really want it to be centered. One, two, and most importantly, you don't want any bubbles. Alright. So I let one side go. And now now that I that I know it will fall in the center, I make sure that there's no bubbles, and I keep rubbing it as I go to make sure that there are no bubbles in between the pad and the bowl. All right, keep going like that on all the way to the end, and there you go. So that's it's pretty it's pretty good go and then uh, there's a lid to that bowl that you put on and it has little holes see these holes should go in these holes just as simple as that and there's these set screws that you put on all right and this is a new machine so I'm gonna make sure that I log in uh, that I say this is uh, I'm, I'm logged in up here, and I will say I will be using the Vivermet. Vivermet number three. Okay. Log. And then you turn it on right here. Oh, I unplugged it earlier. You turn it on right here. You uh, tell it to cycle or stop your cycle. So if you tell, but you first you need to tell it the amplitude. So I want to go about 50%, and with the white button starts. You hear that? It's vibrating and it seems a little loud uh, when it's when it's too loud and you can tell 
you'd need to tighten these a little more. Uh, but it seems to be okay right now. That's more or less the, the, the tone you want. And this is ready. So now let me get my uh, diamond, uh, sorry, silicon dioxide solution. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna have to do with this last little bit of silicon dioxide solution I have here. This is a 0.05 micron suspension, silicon dioxide. Uh, it's not diamond anymore, it's not silicon carbide anymore. Now it's just glass. So what you do is you simply pour it on the bowl until it covers the whole bottom of the bowl. This should be enough. I would have liked a little more, I would have liked, but I, I just ran out of it. But this is all right, it's just covering the bowl, the, 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 oh, the, the floor, bottom of it. And now you have these little sample holders right here. What they do is just simply hold your sample uh, and face down, your sample is going to be your sample is going to be the only thing touching the pad. So I put my puck my sample in here, and right now my sample is not uh, coming out of this uh, metal. So if I put it face down, the metal will be polished, not my sample. So I need to take the sample out of there, push it up with this uh, screw at the bottom. And there you go. You want your sample to be sticking out enough so that when you put this thing face down, and then you tighten this right here. When you put this thing face down, your sample is the only thing that will be touching the bottom of the bowl. So there you go. I think this is ready. All right, so I'm just gonna put it right there. And it starts rotating. Let's do the next one. Right, when it's sticking out a little bit, tighten this one right here, tighten this one as well, put it right there, and on it goes. And there's a bigger set of these uh, sample holders. Uh, I want it, I want it sticking out a little more than that, so I'll just push it like this. sticking out you see it hopefully you do and if I put it as the only thing that's going to be touching the pad again you hear that this screw is not tightened properly so let me tighten that whenever you hear a noise that is annoying other than oh well, maybe that one's annoying but uh, they get really annoying whenever something rattling you don't want anything to rattle so here goes the aluminum block. There's my aluminum block, and I'll just put it right there. And finally, this last guy, 37. Got it. And now I can leave this here for 24 hours, and the samples will look a lot better. So. Let's wait 24 hours and see what they look like. Actually, next time I talk to you tomorrow, uh, or maybe some other day, because I'll, I won't record this tomorrow, um, I will be talking to my computer. I won't be in this room anymore, because all this recording equipment won't be here. But you do need to clean your samples very carefully once they are out of the vibramate. You don't want any stains on them. Any picture that you've seen up to this point it has been an okay picture. It may have some spots, some uh, uh, mainly scratches, but also some stains. You don't want any stains. Once you get a mirror, like a perfect cut after this, this step, you want to clean your sample. So let me show you how your sample should be cleaned. And that's the way I'm gonna clean it tomorrow before I take the pictures. Uh, so let's, uh, let's grab one sample. Let's assume 24 hours have passed. Let's take this sample take it over there to the sink and I'll show you how to clean this. Okay, so 24 hours passed and I I have my sample here so I want to turn my DI water on over here. There's a 
you actually don't want tap water anymore. You want deionized water. You let this, you rinse your sample. I'm gonna put it down here, just with the water running on it while I get my Allen wrench, because I forgot about it. And what you need is, well first the Allen wrench to get it out of it, out of there. And you need a piece of a pad. The same pad that is in the Vibramic right now. I've cut it in a small square, and we usually have some a, a bag full of these around. And what you have, what you do is you take this pad, you get it wet first, and you gently rub your sample on this pad. Now think of the pad as a brush, and you want that brush to remove the particles. You want to sweep particles, whatever particles, whatever silicon dioxide particles are uh, logs of that solution are on that are on my sample I want to brush them off and that's essentially that's exactly what you're doing grab it think of this as a brush a brush the particles out with the running water and that should give you a pretty pretty clean sample and you blow this out sometimes you have to do this numerous times I usually do it four times Blow it out. Again. Blow it out. This should give you a sample that is spotless when you're done. When when you take this to the microscope. So I'm gonna close my water now. And you should have a sample that is, is, is actually, yeah, it's perfect for the, for the microscope. It will give you a clean surface with nothing on it but your sample. No stains, no scratches. Of course, if you polish it properly, no scratches. And if you clean it properly, no stain. That's how you clean your sample. It's a fairly, 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 fairly important step because if you take this to the microscope and it's scratch free, but you have stains everywhere, it's gonna be a crappy picture anyways. So make sure you clean your sample very well after you take it out of the vibrant. And I think that's it. We've gone from mounting a sample to having a perfect cross section for the microscope. That is preparing a metallographic sample. I will talk to you tomorrow when our samples have gone through 24 hours in the vibrant and I've cleaned them and I've imaged them. And we'll, we'll do some closing remarks and that's, that's about it. See you later. All right, guys. Uh, so let's take a look at what we have uh, so far. Let me show you. Hold on. Let me show you uh, so the pictures. And I have already taken the samples out of the viper made. I've cleaned them properly. Make sure that there were no stains, no nothing before I took them to the microscope. And here are the final pictures. Uh, which are the ones that you should be using to measure or to show them in a presentation or to publish them in a paper. And if we start with the strand, uh, this is the final polish image. So it looks pretty good. Let me take that to 100%. And the image is very nice. This was taken with a scanning electron microscope, so you can uh, tell the Z contrast of each one of the components. And this is perfect. I actually will use this image to measure uh, some stuff later on. And if we go now to the, uh, no, I did not take any pictures of the longitudinal. Here's the hex. And it also looks pretty damn good. Um, you can see now some of the features uh, that were not possible, that we, we could not see before because of all the uh, scratches that we had. But this is very clean. Uh, you can see here the tin, very clean. No, maybe these particles could be uh, some foreign particles, but it's good enough. I, I think for, if I'm to do any analysis on these, there should be very, very good. Um, now for the aluminum block, 
and it's interesting. Let me show you. Uh, you can see that the grains of the aluminum are somewhat textured. And let me zoom out, maybe. And you can see they're going all the all the grains are going in this direction. This suggests that whatever piece I took from a shop was probably drawn or somehow cold worked so that the the grains are all aligned in one direction. Um, but this is what it looks like. This probably is stain. All these particles are probably precipitates. Um, then again, this is an example where I did not know what was in my sample. Therefore, any of these things, I don't know if they were there before or uh, I introduced them while polishing. This is where it's very important to know what your sample is. In my case, this, I just wanted to show uh, a piece of aluminum, so I grabbed just a random aluminum block that I found. Uh, but now I really want to know what it is because if these are this, uh, precipitates, this must be some kind of dispersion strengthening alloy uh, aluminum. I did not know they made that those well uh, or maybe just they're just uh, polishing particles that they shouldn't be there so very important to know what your sample is made of now what I'll think I'll do is I will put these this entire folder I mean all of these uh, th three four folders I will use them uh, I will put them where the sheet is so let me open a new uh, Z drive uh, ASC metallography. I think that's where I put the yeah metallography. Uh, let's, see. let's see. No, I don't think it's metallography. I think it's polishing sheets. Polishing sheets. Yes, train and video. I will put these images, all of these things, in here. Um, so if you ever go to the Z drive and you really want to take a look at. Ooh, Maybe I'm opening, maybe I'm using these. Oh, what the hell. Alright, there they are. Didn't let me move this one, I don't know why. Oh, come on. Who's using it? This guy using it. Well, I'm just gonna copy it then. Oh. Copy. Okay, so you have in the Z drive, if you go to ASC Polishing Sheets Training Video, you will find the longitudinal steps that I took, um, and you will also find the the all the pictures in case you want to take, you want to take a look at them. So uh, I think you guys are ready to start your own polishing. Uh, your own metallographic adventure. You can try uh, get some samples from someone and start polishing, start trying to get the, the, the right image at the end. Uh, and I think that's one of the most important and valuable lessons that I want to get across here. Uh, I want you guys to begin with the end in mind. I want you to uh, get a sample and I want you to have a very clear idea of why you're doing what, you, why you're, doing, what you're doing. And uh, again, you need to uh, you need to know what you're going to do with your sample and uh, the answer to this question shouldn't be uh, I'm just going to give it back to the person who gave it to me or the answer should never be I'm just doing this because someone told me to. No, you need to uh, know your sample, know what it is made of, how was it made, what are you expecting to find out after you're done polishing this sample. These are all the this, being conscious of all of these big picture questions is uh, the most important part uh, of this and taking the initiative and being resourceful is very important and that's the difference between a student that just comes to the lab and to collect a paycheck and students who actually come here to learn and make an impact uh, in our group uh, and I think that's about it um, uh, hopefully this was uh, helpful and uh, I hope you have a good adventure here at the Applied Subject Activity Center. Later.